Welcome back to Nightmine Live, and welcome to the first episode of Office Visitor, in which I bring someone along for the adventure. Exploring by Bear Day with someone and seeing its third episode for the first time during debut week was a special occasion, and it only felt right to have along my inky bro, Xander Netherbrand, a fellow demon who has never experienced unfiction. Yeah, I know, showing someone by Bear Day as their first experience is kind of like setting the bar at Olympic height, but we had an incredible time and he was, as you probably expect, blown away. And so was I for that entire third episode. Wow. The first part of this video is just VTuber and friend stuff, spending a little time in the office main before getting into the action, talking about how we met, how our friendship developed behind the scenes, and how we were really just both waiting for me to debut already with uh, the form that I needed. If you want to skip right to the viewing, hit the timestamp on screen or use the YouTube chapter system to jump right into it. Major thanks again to Xanther and the Netherlings for coming to spend a night in our realm. If you guys found you enjoyed crazy stuff like that, I've got more explorations right here and in the future. And you bet I'll be inviting Xanny along for more. <laughs> Come on in, doors unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to finally be here. Yes! Welcome on in, Xander, everybody. This is Xander Netherbrand of First Stage Productions over on YouTube. Check the pinned comment here. Did I say pinned comment? Oh my god, my YouTube. I, That's where my YouTube brain so goes. I think he's so YouTube. <laughs> 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 oh my god, but you know it too, right? It's like, you, you right? have to do the pinned comments too. I'm, I'm sure. No, I do like, I don't do pinned comments, but I still catch myself using Twitch lingo. <laughs> when I'm like, oh, thank you for the, oh, what was it? The, I, I was gifted subs, I still say. I still say gifted subs. Yeah, because over there it's <laughs> memberships, right? Oh yeah. man. But yes, I'm so YouTube right. I'm so YouTube coded. Uh, yes, the pinned, um, message <laughs> Xander's uh Xander's account over there on YouTube um is up there so yes in a in a strange kind of twist we are both YouTube centered I just stream here predominantly while mm -hmm. everything of Xander's is over on YouTube but uh we hit it up a while back obviously we both have a love of purple both demonic but uh <laughs> man it was just <laughs> immediate it was immediate. It's a fun story. It's a fun story. The fact that, um, I mean, I, I, sh shall we retell it? Fuck yeah, of course. <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> okay, so it was briefly after my debut, almost six months ago, actually, we're having the, the six-month anniversary celebration this Saturday. Um, I was... Ooh. I was so glad I was able to actually fit you in for, like, my, my six-month anniversary week. Thank but, you. Um, it was just after I, I debuted. It must have been like maybe a few weeks, maybe maybe something. But this this giant lovable beast here uh, turned around and just randomly added me on Twitter and was like, "Purple, Incubus, love of coffee. I see you, brother." <laughs> and, it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> and that was how it started. <laughs> That's legit how it started, yeah, because because the the whole thing with YouTubers is like a little a little I guess the term would be in in America like inside baseball. Um, it's very much a case of even if you don't know who somebody is in the scene, if you're on Twitter or something, and you see somebody and they seem cool and you like their deal, you just kind of throw something at them and say hello. Yeah. So I saw I saw Xander. And I was just immediately like, "Yo, what's going on here? I'm digging this. So let me, <laughs> let me, let me sneak up and say hello." And um, <laughs> so that's exactly how it happened, right? And um, from there, it was it was getting to know Frederick, and I was actually nervous about like talking to you at first. I left it like a good a good month after we first interacted to be like, "Well, well, well I've left it too long now." And then Frederick was like. You should go talk to him <laughs> in that like Frederick way. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, Fred, okay, talk, Fred talks to a lot of people. Yeah, Fred, Frederick's around, and I I got that shove in uh, in your direction, and we haven't kind of looked back since. We we really just clicked super quick. 
Yeah. Oh my god, like, no no lie. I, I don't know if I told you this, but the, the first time that you actually, like, reached out to me, um, for, for like, full, full-length conversation, I was at the gym. Uh, like, I had just started my routine, so all, all that conversation was happening between, between sets. Wait. <laughs> wait, wait, no, 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 because, like, are we talking about, like, the, the, the first time that we had, like, a full-length back and forth? Yeah. I was at the gym, too. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I got to watch my mic here. <laughs> I was talking to you for three sets. <laughs> yeah, fucking say, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, wait. I think I think it was my my abs and back day. What do you remember what you were doing? Chest and arms. Chest and arms. Okay. All right. Mm. Because that would have been hysterical if it was, if it was the same thing. <laughs> oh, man. Abs and back. Yeah. But, yes. <laughs> Fred, Fred gave Xander a push. And secretly, I'd been waiting because I thought, man, just let me get my actual freaking model. And then I can, like, really talk to everybody that I want to talk to. Because it just it felt like I was sitting around. And it's like, what's the point right now when I look like this? Right. You know, it's like I'd rather I'd rather walk in with my real face. Um, but Fred pushed and I'm very glad that he did. We're very glad he did because we hit it off immediately. And it's just been like a just an understanding of okay, this is happening very soon. Collab as soon as possible after. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we are with it. So I've known Sander for a bit now. Oh yeah. I how long would it be now? About a month and a half, two months? Something like two months, yeah. Something like that. We've been going back and forth for a while. <laughs> yeah, we have. Oh, hold on. whoa, Turtles and Chill! Turtles and Chill is back in here with the fire and bits. Nick looking real giga chat. Love to see it. Love to see you too. Uh, shout out to Aww. Turtles and Chill, um, a channel that is, as I remember it correctly, I think, uh, literally watching turtles and chilling. I love that concept. Yeah. Oh, and Xander, this, this is something that happens. Um, Grin Valesti saying, Legit, Nick had inspired me to do super simple exercises at my workstation during the day. Simple leg lifts, I have a three pound hand weight, and do simple bicep stuff. It actually helps, it feels great. That's awesome. With talking about the gym, Xander, have you found yeah. anybody else in the Netherlands that are popping up saying that all of a sudden they've taken it up to? Uh, I've had one or two Netherlands that already go to the gym or were like, taking a little bit of a lull and I occasionally get someone being like hey Zanny uh you talking about the gym pushed me to get back into it or it's like made the, the place less intimidating or something like that and yes it's, it's really chill it's really chill because I know that the hat like oh the first time I went to the gym must have been a, maybe like a year like a couple of years ago a year and a half and like I remember the first time like properly working out going to the gym felt like such an intimidating thing because it's like oh well, what if I don't know what I'm doing? What if I'm? But then you just kind of like kick down the door after a little bit, and you're like, "All right, I'm here. Time to do my thing and go." Yeah, then you really make it your own, and you just it feels it feels like just a natural extension of uh, anything else. <laughs> like sure. I get, I walk into the gym, and it just be like, "Yep, this is my place." I mean, mm -hmm. I don't own the gym. I'm not the boss of this gym, <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's my place. You know, I know it. I've hit all, I've hit all sorts of equipment. I I know it very well. You just you get that feeling of like, yep, back at it. Yep, it it becomes like mundane, you know. Mm. Yeah, mundane in a very good way, though. Yeah, like routine. I should say yeah. routine. Good routine. I'm seeing uh, a few netherlings in chat as well. Lovely to see you all here. Get Hello. on. Hello, welcome on in, everybody. Hey, it ain't a copycat of Vilafar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, please, Netherlings, say hi. Hello. Yeah, I mean, you guys are saying hi to me when I popped up, and it's like, we didn't even collab yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been wanting to do this for, like, quite a while now. Like, quite a while. We were, like, going back and forth. We were like, what what day is good for you? And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. Yeah, I got... Well, first of all, I got a sneak peek at, at the new Nick before, before like, the, everyone else did, and I was like... Oh, oh! This is this is like. Let me just it's, say, it's true. I give uh, I give 
private shows to special people. Oh, well, when you say <laughs> it like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that's absolutely wonderful, though. No, I, I'm sure I will return the favor at some point. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look so good in your 2.0. I know you've already had your... I'm sure you've already had an absolute barrage of this, of people saying how much better this this fits you. But let me just say, this is Nick, you know? Thank you. Yes, I mean, it's it's been it's been amazing. Honestly, uh, the way you that keep I bobbing been... up and down, showing off the jiggle physics. <laughs> no, if I wanted to show off the jiggle physics, I could really show off the jiggle physics. Uh, <laughs> but you've seen them. You've seen I've seen them. them. <laughs> I've seen the jiggle physics. <laughs> so Xander knows. Xander knows. Uh, <laughs> Campfire Harvest, thank you for this. Um, but yeah, honest, honest to God, the the way that I've been describing it to people, um, it's like. I knew I was gonna be happy. I knew I was gonna feel better. But it's in the same way that somebody recognizes that the air in the place that they're living is not good. The ventilation is not good. Mm -hmm. So they go and they get it fixed. They get it taken care of and gets entirely taken care of. Like a whole crew comes in and they, they reconstruct the entire thing exactly as it should have been. Gut whatever they need to gut. And then you're living in it for the first two days and you didn't realize how unhealthy it had all been and how much you are breathing now and how much more alive and energetic you feel. The it's honestly like clean, the air yeah. in my house, the entire ventilation system has been swapped for something that is working and I didn't realize how broken it was. I have been so happy. Mm -hmm. I haven't wanted to be late to any streams. I've just wanted to be here. I got done with a long Monday night. I had the Nightmind Index, I had a bit of a collab with my beloved and two of his friends. Uh, then at 2am my time, I had an Astralide collab doing Outlast Trials. I finished up that, I still had energy. It's like, I didn't want to go to bed. <laughs> I mean, I did lurk in that stream. Oh. I lurked in the Outlast Trials, just, mm -hmm. a, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I sometimes lurk. I do that. Yeah, I, uh, I, mm -hmm. yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know you do. I've been caught by you on a few occasions. <laughs> what was it? It was when it was when we were talking about um, Ghostface on my on one of my just chatting streams, and then I suddenly look in my DMs, and you've sent me a picture of Ghostface on a hat <laughs> saying this would suit you. I'm like, yeah. I did this. This fluffy bastard is watching me. <laughs> Just sometimes when I when I'm off, especially like getting ready for debut, I was up at all different hours, and it was like, uh, "Hey, Xander's on. Why not? Why not tune in for a minute?" And you know what? Just moments where it's like, "Okay, I'll say hello here. I'm not trying to pop up in, in your space and and, and make a oh, scene." Oh no, no, no. Like... you're always a welcome guest. You're always a welcome guest. I love seeing you stop by. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, he's bit. Oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look at the size of you. <laughs> Just waiting for the clippers to finish. Sorry. Right. It's it's fine. It's fine. I, I don't mind this in the slightest. <laughs> give it give it the clippers their moment to shine there. Oh man. Yeah. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh. Speaking of hats, I guess. <laughs> well, somebody activated my toggle. Oh, oh, look at the fit! Oh, <gasps> you have. Oh wait, did you? I, I forget. Did you? Did you see this? Did I get? No, to show you? you didn't show it. This was still be being made when you when you. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was still being made when I when I gave you a little bit of a showcase here. Yeah, here uh, I'll stand back. Uh, oh wow! And it, it's all toggleable too. Okay, it's uh. That's so I can drop that. Of course it bloody is. Uh, the, hat, the hat pops off and on. I can boot to the backpack straps. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love it. I absolutely adore it. <laughs> yeah, I can even, uh, I can take off the, uh, let's see, it's not uh, bad, the wristband, yeah. I can do the wristband. 
yes. waiting for him to take off the wrong thing. I'm just waiting for him to take off the no, wrong thing. No, no, I I have <laughs> safeguards. <laughs> I I have safeguards. I'm a responsible VTuber. I'm a res I am I am responsible. Uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah, I can I can. This is the this is the only Trivia, This is the only mode so far in which I can legitimately uh, get out yeah, yeah. my big stompy feet. I mean, look look at I mean, dudes dudes aiming to get oh. to, to play into a certain audience. Well, with that. there <laughs> there goes that toggle. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and people say I misbehave on stream. No, this is misbehaving. But, but, <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> oh man, I love him. it though. I love it. This, this is, you know me by now. I had to have a, I had to have a jock turn outfit. I had to. <laughs> you had to. <laughs> also, I love the necklace. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. My artist, my artist has been extra in the best ways with little unexpected touches you can even see some bat like the bat evolution the dna touches are all over this outfit actually you can see a okay. touch of a bat wing on the hat obviously it's in the necklace it's on the the fitbit fit bat uh you can oh, see yeah. them on oh. the shorts oh yeah, yeah and yeah, even even with the sneakers a touch like that that kind of design is evocative of Batwing, which I know you must appreciate. Right. Yeah, do you know I'm an appreciator of wings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you still got yours here. Come on, come on in a bit oh, more. You, all right, let me shuffle, shuffle yeah, in deeper yeah. in. Come on, a little showcase time. To, me to get closer to him. Uh, 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 there we go. There's my there's my wing in case uh, you haven't seen it. There we yeah. go. Yeah, there yeah. it is. There it is. Wing, wing, uh, wing! This great thing. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> uh, it's so large as well. It's a very large wing. I like how it matches the the, the wings you've got on your little necklace, though. Yes. Your again. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I love the wing. The wing the wing is so cool. It's all cool. <laughs> <laughs> we we love we love monsters here. We we both do. It's like. A little bit more monster lead than anything is like, yeah, that's the good shit. That's a little bit works. of extra monster never hurts. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Usually, I'd leave. I'd leave the the toggles for a bit longer. I do. I do have some uh, some tiring stuff on it, but uh, it is our special occasion. It is a nightline kind of a night. Therefore, let me just uh, slip back into a proper attire. <laughs> I've just been, the, the chat have just asked me to show the tail as well. You got tail? I have a tail. Wanna, wanna get a look at my tail? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, tail. Let me, let me, let me shuffle back a little bit. Yeah. All right. And. Yeah, yeah there, there it There's is. There's my tail. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that, oh, that's a good balance, too. <laughs> right? Like it's, it's got a lot of volume to it. It's, it's a very volume tail. <laughs> it's, got, it's got some fish hook type, type of stuff. It's oh. sharp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, eyes on the tail, not the body suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> Hell yeah, ah. pointy tail, love it. Oh my god, this this comment here, <laughs> Logan. Oh whoa, hi, I found you through Shia. He was thirsting over you on Twitter. Nice to meet you. Love the stray so far. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was just that was just good friendship, of of some nice furry men hanging out together, in, in absolute natural state. It, it, you know, that's just it's just uh, this is some bro mm -hmm. stuff. Just some bro right. stuff. <laughs> but welcome yeah, on yeah. in. Pleasure to have you. Alrighty. <laughs> so that that was a ton of fun. <laughs> no, we were gonna have you knew we were gonna have like twenty minutes of fun before getting into anything. We, we had to. Honestly, I came in with no plans and just to have the most fun possible. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's the best way to do it. It's the best way. Absolutely. Oh, hmm, still thinking says I've been lurking and have been speechless. Until now. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> All right, so a little bit more business mode here. <sighs> okay, everybody. So my crowd is very familiar with the project that will be hitting tonight, Xander, called Ooh. Valle Verde. It is an unfiction project out of Argentina in the category oh. of this game I found stories. Are you familiar with the idea of this game I found? I am not. All right. So have you heard of stuff like Ben Drowned? The creepy no. pasta? No, oh. I haven't. I, I'm familiar with creepy pastas, but not Ben Drowned. Okay. Um, so you you know a little bit about the idea of unfiction and what it is that I, I do in particular. Um, mm -hmm. Online horror storytelling has a subgenre called this game I found, which is basically it's it's exactly as it as it sounds. It started with the idea of somebody telling a story about this game I found. It can be at a garage sale. In the case of Ben Drowned, which was um, the story of a haunted or possessed copy of Majora's Mask. Oh. Yeah, very very famous uh, kind oh. of horror story there. Um, kind of a Wait pioneer a of the whole subgenre. That is ringing yeah. some bells. Haunted copy of Madura's Mask is, is dredging some memories. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a bit of an ARG too, actually. So it, it had those puzzle elements, a lot of interactive elements that kind of came up with that. Uh, but it started, it, it really, that and some other things in Creepypasta kicked off this idea of this game I found, which previously was just good edits of existing video games that could be modded, written stories in recent years it has evolved into a very cool state of people actually making original games at least all of the assets for it and then recording gameplay as if they were a character who actually found it and then putting that on YouTube um, interesting one of the the first massive massive entries in the field is called Pets Cop that'll be the one that gets brought up the first time anybody mentions it um, okay. We have had others in the field that have come up that have been big called Diminish, which is a lovely 2D project. Uh, then along came another big swinger, which is the one that we're going to be checking out tonight by a bear day. On occasion, this game I found stories can be legitimately playable. Uh, Catastrophe Crow was another one that was debatedly playable in the recent rollout of its playable version. Um, still a little salty, I will admit. <laughs> we, we, we tried to play it live on stream while I was the March Hare, and uh, uh... it was entirely browser-based, but it was a platformer type of game, so there was no save system. One single misstep meant death and loss of all progress. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. And then the knockout uh, that came out this year in January, Shipwreck 64, which is entirely playable, fantastic experience. It'll scare the shit out of you deep inside. Okay. Of it. Oh my god! It, it'll, it's, it's a, it's gold. It's gold status. Um, and there's, there's more to come. By the way, if you haven't been keeping up with Squeaks the Corgi, the developer, and uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, like this is, this is my induction to this. You're getting a completely fresh inductee to this entire little world, which I, I think is actually quite Next interesting post. because I've never quite been to this side of the internet before. You're gonna like it, especially with what you see tonight. I mean, what I'm gonna show you tonight is kind of like spoiling somebody because I'm showing you what is effectively top shelf stuff. It's kind of the bar right now for this game I found stories in terms mm -hmm. of what has been achieved in true holy crap knockout status. And we've been following another one lately uh, that is brand new called Vermis Malum. Uh, that really rocks. But I've been I've been waiting for the for a sit down with you for the third part of Baye Berte because it did roll out. I've only covered the first two. And yeah. this dude this dude has achieved things that nobody else has achieved with his work. You're you're in for it, Netherlings. You're in for a show. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Small Hobo Mom says, we have such sights to show you. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I know that you were holding off on the third part until you dragged me into your office, so I'm really glad to actually be here for this. Yeah, this is going to be a hell of a time. All right, let's move over to the other corner of the office, settle down, and get into it. Oh, let's go. Intenté toda la mañana poner este video en palabras comprensibles. Realmente intenté, pero la historia es demasiado larga para poner en un video corto. Hacer un video largo, la verdad, no le veo mucho caso. Pero básicamente me salí un poco de camino en la Reserva de la Plata. Y terminé en una parte del bosque que estaba medio muerta. Disculpen los cortes, es que lo estoy haciendo desde Instagram. Una de las partes hay como una especie de entrada. Una especie de cueva de árboles. Que si van seguro lo van a encontrar. Y si no se afanaron la estatua seguramente todavía está. Y eso, me encontré una estatua. Y al costado de la estatua había como tierra movida. Y una cosita roja que salía. Me puse a tirar de curioso nada más. Pero no salía nada porque estaba trabado. Y después ya me daría cuenta por qué. La otra semana fui con una pala. Pequeño detalle que dejé afuera. Esto pasó hace unos dos años atrás más o menos. Cuando empecé a desenterrar. Con mucho cuidado de no cortar el hilo. De metal. Cuando la abrí tenía tergopol. Como tergopol por los costados. Adentro del tergopol sacándolo tenía un nylon. Y adentro del nylon estaba el video que es... El que les acabo de mostrar. Lo metí en la mochila porque no es muy grande. Y como tengo un video acá que era de mi viejo que está juntando polvo. Digo, bueno, a ver qué es. And there we have our setup. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Got any first thoughts or feelings? <laughs> it's, it feels like it's the start of something that could mm -hmm. become, I don't want to say like more sinister, but it feels almost like that, that point in horror movies where, you know, there's the box under the ground. There's the string. I ha I've walked away with more questions than I have answers. This feels like I've just had a bit of bait dangled in front of me. Yeah, exactly the case here. Uh, very much uh, a setup of this game I found. Although, in a very weird twist of fate, it's not the literal game. Uh, you right. changed it up by, by it being a recording of a game. It's a VHS tape. It's a VHS right. tape of a game. Which is very how and why, especially with it being out in the woods like this. Right, um, out in there, there's so much stuff which doesn't make sense when taken as a singular, especially without anything to add that extra layer of context. Why is there a VHS tape out in the woods? Why was it in a box? Why was it protected with styrofoam? Why was there string wrapped around it? Mm. Uh, why was it recorded in the first place? It, it, it's so much that gives impetus to what could come next. Why was there a statue there? Why was there a good, good one too? Mm -hmm. And also, I just, I want to review one element real quick. Fui con una pala. Pequeño detalle que dejé afuera. Esto pasó a... His sick moves with the shovel. <laughs> I, I smiled when I saw that. You could yeah. wind it back and you could see, I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, this man knows what he's doing. The man flips the... Que dejé afuera. Esto pasó hace unos 
dos años atrás más o menos. The man yeah. flips the like he looks like he paid for a Call of Duty Warzone skin with that little shovel reload right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it absolutely does look like that. But it's like, hey, watch this real quick, guys, before I get into everything else. Whew. He's like, I practiced this. It's like I, I've, you know, gone through all of this specific setup, but I practiced this shovel flip specifically for this video. <laughs> imagine, oh my god, imagine if he did. But yes, we have this lunchbox here with very specific coating of the blue and the red, which mm. that is that's something that I haven't quite seen come into play yet. I mean, I've seen elements of it in what I have observed of the series, but. Nothing yet that does kind of tie in deeply. And now, of course, as Vendra said earlier, thank you, Vendra, for saying it, uh, we have not seen Part 3. I imagine that a lot of us watching tonight have not yet seen Part 3. So, spoilers down, please. You know, mm -hmm. keep, keep it, keep quiet, and just enjoy the reveals. But I'm also curious about, like, the game that's being shown. It looks like a really interesting blend of, like, Animal Crossing and like that old uh, Sonic JRPG. Yeah. Oh man. So this is this is where it really like this is a great setup, and the delivery is so much better. Here we go. Part one. Oh. This is this is the first part of what was on the tape. All right, so now we have some information immediately. Okay. This comes from 1997, February 14th, out of Japan, unreleased, and we have some names when it comes to a company, as well as a report summary, malfunctioning AI, corrupted learning data, and issues regarding the product specialized hardware. Try to remember these three elements as we, win as we witness what's about to unfold here. Understood. That's what it was. That's right. <laughs> the red and blue, oh, so prominent the... right there. Oh, the red and blue. Oh, with the with the old PlayStation boot up. Yep, right in the logo. Almost an exact match with the coloring. Yep. Okay, that's lovely. Now, check check this out. The, yeah, I, I d please do not unplug TH brain device. Restart or turn off the console. Really makes you stop, right? Like, it, what, it, what the hell is that? TH brain. Yeah, I, it immediately makes you think of like uh, the old inter interfaces or peripheral devices back in the day. Mm. Right, when you'd be able, like, yeah, for sure. It kind of reminds me of when you'd slot one cartridge into another to unlock something, you know? Or yes. Even just then, where there were so many additional peripherals that got added to old systems. Like, I, I think it was the GameCube that ended up, like, a handful of different peripherals by the time it was done. Yeah, no, the GameCube had so many. Nintendo has always had insane amounts of peripherals. This would be an interesting case, though, because it would be the first PlayStation with a peripheral device or an interface device called the TH brain. All of that footage was original. I that's beautifully <laughs> animated. That's be beautifully animated. When when somebody comes in with a project, swinging something like that, you just stop and stare because nobody comes in with like custom animation like that. Truly, like quality 
realistic to the times original stuff and it, everything it looks, to follow is on on the same bar yeah it, it looks like one of the the classic episodes of the first season of pokemon you know yes yes like yes yes so on brand for the time mm-hmm. and i remember how you how you said the glimpse that you caught gave you vibes of animal crossing mm-hmm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Again, animation top tier plus a cute cat character. Already love it. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, oh my god, this is this this rocks. I can't believe the quality, the quality, the quality, and the commitment. It's like, where can I get this? Where where can I buy this? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh man, it's when you when you find something special out here, you really find something special. I love how you're my, my unfiction guide for this. I love to be. Immediately, like one of the things that struck me as soon as we loaded in, it's just the character design. It's just it's so unique across the board. Nothing really looks like uh, copy paste and then just kind of shift things around a bit. No, it, it's it's really solid, and even just in the structure of the game, it kind of reminds me of like the old sort of My Sims games, the old um, uh, it, it's just very beautiful. The character design is so unique. The look feels like it has created an entire art style that is appropriate for the game, which is just so much effort on top of itself to find a consistent art style for an entire game. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, arriving in town. Let me let me catch that golden mm-hmm. statue again, quick, oh, because now we're getting an statue overview. Is great. <laughs>
Okay, we made it. It's fucked up um, now. <laughs> uh, we we lasted all of like five minutes before things got really weird. Yep. Yeah, basically. I, well, I five minutes. I love that. Absolutely absolutely adore that we lasted five minutes before things got wild okay so immediately i'm just very very drawn in with the images the corruption i noticed very early on that the town's name keeps coming up as like debug something mm. and you know that's that's an immediate eyebrow raise you you know that i know that what's really interesting is you've got all of these different countries different people and they're all this strange version of like corruption of, of like the memory card or something twisted inside it feels unsettling you know yes so something that happens a lot in these projects very many people really cannot wait to just attack when it comes to their project they 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 don't have a lot of patience before they they love to bring out the spooky and just go blah blah blah, blah right in your face now this lasted, like you said, all of five minutes after the initial buildup. Why does it work here, though? Because they put in the work. The whole mm -hmm. ride up, even if it was just five minutes or so into a 20-minute video, look at how much they laid the foundation. They got us in. They got us comfortable. They made us believe. There was not a single hint of, oh, something's haunted in, oh, yeah. inside of this before they whacked us. Whacked. We were in the seat, comfortable, tuned into the movie theater screen by the time they trotted it out. And it, it still wasn't like leaping out of the screen. It's there, and it's messed up, and it's obvious, oh, but yeah. it doesn't destroy the experience. The dramatic build is wonderful, and it really like plays into that classic like Chekhov saying of "Don't put a gun on stage if you don't intend to use it." Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that like, gun it, was it set up from the start. It earned its its pop there, and they really just gently they they gently eased us into a sense of security, so they could pull the rug out from under us. Yep. And when it comes to the way that they're doing this here, Xander, there's. There's a lot that happens in projects when it comes to ideas of horrible thing happening to person where they, they love to hit you with a sledgehammer when it comes mm -hmm. to delivering the goods on that. Here, all we get is the imagery, the glitching, and the, the sign of there was somebody here and their flag is lowered. Something has happened to them. We have no idea what's occurred. We know that they're uh. missing. We know something's wrong. There's even a cultural hint here, too, that somebody mentioned after I covered this for the first time, of when it comes to the flag for Japan, what's left are the shoes. And in other countries' representations, you don't have that. The idea of them missing is just they're missing. Culturally, there is a hint here of more of a cultural tone of the shoes have been left. Which is okay, really that's cool. Genius. Yeah. I'm somewhat of a horror movie buff. I, I love horror movies full mm. of, like through and through. And this feels really like stepping into a really nice found footage horror movie. Yes. Yeah. They're they're playing all the beats right. And so we have the difference here occurring of Matthias from Argentina. Obviously Matthias is in distress. I, look at him. He's trying, he's trying to run to us, his face is not happy, and then boom, he's gone. But he his picture's still long. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I... The pictures are also something that intrigues me, because a lot of these games, sort of, back then, they would just use sort of sprites of the characters, but here we're actually getting images of real people that are twisted up or garbled in some way, which mm -hmm. just sets another level of tone to this and begins to think about and begins to have you think about sort of the implications of what does that mean and they all the final the final factors they all appear to be children they appear to be children from mm -hmm. from different nations which is very huh and like you mm -hmm. said the town is called debug shima 
So this is this is something in its testing phase, it appears. Oh, it's pronounced uh Matias. Matias, thank oh, you, Matias. spooky Scalabros. <laughs> Appreciate it. Nice. And yes, Argentina's flag is also the only one that's raised, Vaderpin mentions. Yes. So Unlike the others, there are signs here of whatever's happened to them, it's not quite fully happened to Matthias. Let's hope he's alright. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. And there again, the red and blue steps in. So this is going to be important. You're going to see a lot of this. Text turns red. And there's it's a cog mine. wheel spinning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's mine, I own it. As yeah. well. It's, it's, I always like to think of why that choice was made for, that, for, for, for dialogue in certain contexts. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So here we have the mayor... Who has erected a monument to himself. Solid gold. 99 carat. Basically saying I own this place. Remember that next election. And mm -hmm. he's flipped from blue to red. And there's that gear turning there. So there's a very noticeable switch of personality. And morality with it. This might be a terrible example, but it reminds me somewhat of like character AI or like chatbots when someone says something and they have to spend like a little bit thinking before they come back, like chat GPT or something like that. Yeah, that actually, that does kind of factor into the tale a bit because there is a loading. There, there's a loading sense here and then something has switched during that load. In and of course, can't miss that one. The smiling one has given me absolute authority over this area. <laughs> the smiling one. Okay. The smiling one. All right. We've got our first allusion to something. Yeah. Hey, Duke of Weasels. Thanks for the 100 pence. Again, that little hint there of as soon as soon as it goes red, there's a morality change. It uh, it does really feel like that kind of two personalities at play. Kind of reminds me of the classic sort of um, any D and D players in the audience will kind of get get it when like the dungeon master's thinking of the next thing to add on to the story. You know, there there is it's 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 interesting you're bringing this out because it it feels like so so much of this. When it comes to projects of this nature, and you have an antagonistic force in here, you really feel a lot of the time like, okay, what's, what's the big bad's deal? What are they doing here? What's their plan? But to think about it in the sense of they are thinking in the moment and reacting mm. is a new perspective, and I like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what is it? Action and reaction is what most stories are based around, you know? Yeah. I forgot that was a piece of it. I, Tom Nook moment. <laughs> Tom Nook moment. As instantly he puts Tom you in Nook debt. Moment. He puts you in debt, and as it happens. The gear. Oh. So anytime we see that gear, something's going wrong. Alright, so now we've got a code here Anomaly. Spontaneous level generation. Hey, 
Hey, Zell, thank you for the two months. Anda a buscar cuatro guinches si te les sueño, pero... Okay. Thoughts? <laughs> that was very strange. I'm still I'm still figuring out just where I'm stitching all of that together in my mind. But mm. the strange babies were a thing, definitely a thing. And then there was that that strange like I don't know, biblically accurate angel from above which yeah. was also just a trip. I, I, there was the gold, there was the, there was the, the, the strange statues, there was the chase, there was this, oh, then he left behind the coins as well, which is interesting. Mm. Yep. So, when it comes to this, there is a logic to it. Oh. Let's, let's review a little bit. It Be starts sure. off with a good note in order to understand what's occurring here. He leaves, he comes back in just to verify what he's seeing, and we have 
a lot of cake and lots of lots of eating sounds. You can hear some utensils. When he first steps in here, you can also hear So you've got drinks being poured too. So you've right. got your food, you've got your drinks all over the place. Lots of lots of cake, good seeming stuff. Right. That satisfying pouring sound. Next up we have this sound where everybody's staring at you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This strange garden of eyes. Yeah. And of course, money, money, and money. riches and fine things, rich, expensive right. art. The the art, even though having like slightly disturbing undertones. Yeah, that too. There is a fun. There is a kind of an Easter egg here when when the gold is taken. You took it from the mayor's office, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> So he draws yeah. the money to get it get it out of the way, proceeds to the next spot. Proceeds to the next spot. And it this is this is an interesting way to portray what this is, but um we have there's a lot of pink, a lot of red, there's blood, and uh there are big black scrabbly piles here mm. in the midst of all this blood. Now, here's here's gonna be the fun part. Uh with with all the baby sounds. Blood. We hear, yep, all the baby sounds and the blood. And we get all these babies coming up with, with all this blood. He runs through one of the big black piles. What's following him, though? Let's see. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Forceps. Oh, and a night and, and a medically gloved up hand. Yes. The lyrics are what's important here. Yeah. Although I will see quickly what was that flash in here? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's just, it's just a, it's just a glitch over of the environment, I see. So that last one, of course, lots of records, ideas about laying around, somebody being lazy while someone else works. And here, mm -hmm. red, 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 big, big, dominating, intimidating figure here. Well, of course, bring out the classic Oppenheimer quote about realizing what they had done in the wake of testing the bomb. Right. And then we end with a whole lot of statues looking into mirrors. So... With that entire span of everything that he just went through as a player character, what do you think about this zone? I'm thinking this is like deadly sin zone. This is this is like general corruption of the soul type things. You got it. It's the seven deadly sins represented as well as they could. That was that the the baby's one is lost. That's a that is an extremely grim. Uh, way to represent that one, but then again, if you're the creator, you're kind of asking yourself, "How do I represent this and put it on YouTube?" Right. <laughs> it, it, it's a really surrealist take on all of it, though, and I really appreciate the thought and effort that must have gone into that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, now all of a sudden, it's there's an anomaly of level generation, and it has to do with seven deadly sins on the way to an existing area, the church. Uh. Playtesters looking around like, what the hell was that? 
Patient two unable to move. Yeah. Hey, happy birthday, belly tail. Okay, now that oh. really gives insight into what's happening here. That is very interesting. Yeah, so we've got Matthias trapped in, trapped in this one space here, unable to move, wanting to talk to his mom, wanting to talk to Mr. Kunimochi, not understanding what happened to his friend Chloe from France, doesn't want to play anymore. It feels so strange. It's almost like they're using actual people as the NPCs, you know, like they've They've plugged in a bunch of people somewhere so they can use them as NPCs or processing power and just left them. Mm -hmm. Or a form of multiplayer. Very early, highly immersive form of multiplayer. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Lovely lady dressed in blue. Teach me how to pray. God was just your little boy. Tell me what to say. Did you lift him up sometimes? Gently on your knee? Did you sing to him the way mother does to me? Did you ever try telling him stories of the world? And oh, did he cry? Do you think he cares if I tell him things? Just little things that happen? And do angels' wings make a noise? Can you hear me if I speak low? you know. Lovely lady dressed in blue, teach me how to pray. God was just your little boy, and you know the way. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy So, very heavy religious uh, Christian ideology overtones here. No, that's that. I, it, it's always very interesting because we've already had sort of a rundown of the deadly sins. Now we're immediately sort of getting placed in, in a church. But then at the same time, the glitches also have immediately moved the person out of the church and back into the town as well. So, and there was no... I, there was no loading screens or, or anything like that, or no gears turning. So that almost felt like the equivalent of one of the old cutscenes that used to happen. Yeah. Yeah, certainly that was a pre-programmed cutscene. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of the tell that we have is um, a lot of the time. Is, is it normal? Well, are we seeing something blue? Is there a gear in the picture? Then it's probably normal. There is, there is an interesting thing here with what he says. I shouldn't have taught my watch the secrets of Joseph of Cupertino. Joseph of Cupertino was in the priesthood, at least. He was, he was one of the brothers. And uh, he was a polarizing figure and still kind of is because the reports were that back in the day, he was 
so strangely spiritually enlightened that he experienced ecstatic visions, ecstatic messages, and learned to levitate. Yes. Uh, it was all going normal until you said that last bit. Yeah. Yeah. The levitating, <laughs> the levitating is where the other brothers looked at him and said, bro, you got to stop. Yeah. Whatever you're on, please stop. Uh, like the first two, you know, you can just sort of smile and nod. The last one, that's when you cock an eyebrow. Yes. Um, that's why he makes the joke, should have taught my watch the secrets of Joseph Cupertino. Now time flies. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's a thing. That's a thing. If you if you look that up, there have there have been reports in the past from various different cultures actually of uh, mm. people who get very deeply spiritually enlightened. They learn how to levitate. Doesn't matter what path that they're following. It's just there are certain people. They reach a point where they can do interesting things. There are reports of levitating yogis. It's very interesting. Mm. I always find it really interesting how certain details like that are always consistent even from a time before there was mass communication between yes. different parts of the world and different faiths you know mm -hmm. yeah people who have no no nothing to sell traveling the world coming back writing their books in like the 17 1800s even early 1900s and reporting this 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 culture in in just the base of these mountains in this far off nation of like really monk type people they they have a guy who who can get off the ground he, right. just like a foot off the ground and i've never seen it i can't believe it but it happened mm -hmm. and so now we've got object generation and change and notice we started earlier in february and now it's uh, February 18th, so this is over the course of a few, a few different days that they keep getting in here and trying the testing and figure out what's going on here and how, how do we help this kid. So that's a, a more difficult one to understand. It keeps switching between the guy and the... and I don't know whether it's, it's meant to be a switch between the sort of bipedal, more humanoid version of things and then the quadrupedal, more animalistic side of the, the brain, maybe. I, I can only think that it shows there's that definite separation between the sort of humanoid and animalistic instinct maybe that that's the nearest thing i could perhaps attribute it to it's it's one way to interpret it the other way to interpret it is the idea of the golden calf or oh, golden cow really, of course like that golden yeah calf. like that divine idol but because of the nature of the character that this is in the first place uh it does make you wonder what the exact interpretation is or if it is strangely appropriately bl uh, blended between them. It's also interesting, like you mentioned, how the character that this is, you know, then being depicted as the golden calf, this false idol, this false god. And at the same time, the mayor seems to have been the main interpretation of the brain's will inside of this little simulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one with the power. Mm-hmm. Choco! What's up, Choco? Okay, yeah, this spontaneous generation here. 
very strange Statue of Liberty type of statue. That was very Statue of Liberty just then. Yep, with a bit of a twist to it. Well, not not a bit, like uh, quite a quite a lot of twist. Um, but get a good look at this thing. Just kind of really try and absorb that for a second and its details, its overall shape. Mm -hmm. Just kind of remember that for later. Another spontaneous level generation. They're following the mayor down this alley. Egality, fraternity, is that, liberty. Is that from the Arc de Triomphe? It is French. I've heard that before. Egalité, fraternité, liberté. I've heard that somewhere before. Mm -hmm. Yep, it, it does come from France. It's, it's interesting to have this piece because originally I looked at it and I understood, okay, the, the wording is coming from France. I don't know about the symbol, though, because it's making me think of Freemasons. <laughs> and it's like, why, why Freemasons mixed with French? Hmm. It was the French Revolution saying. Okay. Oh, it was the French Revolution saying. Hmm. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. My, my, my grandfather was actually in the Freemasons. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> what? Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? Yeah. <gasps> it's just, just going to keep on happening. Let's this accept just, it now. This isn't going to stop. This isn't nope. going to stop. Are you yeah. sure we're not related? I'm sure. I, I, mean, I mean, technically we are because, you know, mother. I mean, but, uh, of course. Yeah. We're all related through mother. But <laughs> yeah. I'm just the not furry version of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you could always get beastly down the road if you if you if you're into it. It's oh, a it's a fun side of life. You don't tempt me too much. But tempting is what we do. It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> right. So beyond this area, try to remember when it happens. I forgot that was our, our first punch to the face in the series. Oh, and how effective it was. Oh, oh I, I have to admit I did recoil. Yep, yep, that got me again too. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you've got, you've got to love the way that this has been crafted for the experience to make sure that when, when something hits, it hits. Mm -hmm. I that love the really little homages to, to other classic sort of PlayStation games as well. Like, Im immediately as you step into that area, you can feel the influence from Silent Hill. Yeah. The foggy area. Ethereal kind of world. Mm-hmm. And so this is, this is one of our first very intriguing mysteries that's going on here. Because all of this is occurring in February of 1997. Then a, a message pops up all across the different languages, including the game. Turn on the console on March 22nd, 1997. So what is going on here that wants the playtester to do that? 
why does it want it and why that date in particular again this is this this series is giving us far more questions than answers hmm. the funny thing is it. that it's 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 answering it's answering some of them at the same time like it's giving you the information to understand there's a the greater picture occurring here while also mm. increasing those questions right mm. it it's interesting because i feel like we're being provided questions but we're also giving being given context to start unraveling earlier questions or even if we're given answers but then we're trying to find out the right questions to ask in response yeah when it comes to this um we have a pack of wolves surrounding a fallen lamb. Mm. We have Chloe from France, who is apparently a player who is missing. And we have oh. kind of a very French portal to towards this. I almost feel as if this is more so speaking to the sense of what happened, happened to Chloe here. or Chloe was the fallen lamb, as it yeah. were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe whatever hit us here took her and that is just oh that effect that squirms yeah this nasty oh oh Ugh. oh look at the hands yeah and the depth of the face oh the way that shit just hits ah oh, still makes your skin crawl a little <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the it, it it's like seeing sort of like almost bugs under under what we're looking at, you know, that first layer sort of contorting slightly. Yeah, like a live rot. So then the player gets knocked on his ass, and we get that that call to appear on the twenty second of March. Mm. And I've got a good, a good note. People are bringing up is what the hell is that language at the bottom? No discernible language that you can detect, especially because. If we remember the flags from the beginning to denote what language are we going to be using here for the game, there were only four. Oh, we have English, oh, you're right. I didn't even realize French, that. German, and Spanish, and that that's not Japanese at the bottom. Nope. Uh Raidful report. Right. I, I can't remember if a full report ever came. This hmm. is on the 22nd, though. So, again, it's, it's later on. Fe 22nd of February. All right. We're not at March right. yet. So as still far as I know, there's no March month. yet. Mm -hmm. Now we're really getting biblical. <laughs> that, well, I said something about biblically accurate angels earlier. You got it. You got well, your biblically accurate angel. Yep. I, I like the, one thing I noticed about the, the food that was provided as well was it, it didn't, it wasn't real food. It looked like what someone who had never seen food before would describe or draw food as. You know, you know that that is a comment I have never seen, and you're right because the coloring is largely wrong, and it does. The seem coloring is like, wrong. Like fantasy. the shapes are incorrect. the The general overall look it's like appetizing colors, but they're in the wrong shapes. And even then, it it's like uh, you can tell what stuff is meant to be, but it's like someone's been given a loose description of what food is, and they've tried to draw it from there. So maybe, and the idea that maybe it's not so much a fake as it is special 
and it was rare and it's just it's not around anymore so this this seems very very forward from the sequence of events it's the the whole hey come here i got some tasty fruit for you you eat it and then of course It, it happens fast, but you can see the context. Why aren't you standing there? Take as many fruits as you can. Quick, time's running out. You know you'll die, right? If you're up to the neck, why don't you keep going down? Do you have something else in the consolation of this earth? Take what you can. What are you doing, losing time? You're already stained. Your destiny is sealed. And yeah, I think it, it, I think it is, yes, the accuser is the voice here. And it is the red, and we have the cogwheel. So then we end up outside of the church, and we have the biblically accurate angel. Approach the biblically accurate angel, and what happens? Flaming sword. Oh! Oh, I didn't even see that. It happened so quickly. Hmm. Oh, Bo, thanks for the bits. Wanted to message to see if you know about Enochian. Right. Right, it could be something that cryptic for that last language. And Coaster Ranger has it right. Did we get kicked out of the Garden of Eden? Yes, because in the tale of the fall of man, after getting kicked out of the Garden, it, it said that God placed angels with flaming swords, or at least swords, at the gate to ensure they could never come back. Oh, goodness. Mm hmm Kicked out of Green Valley. Correct. By Verde, meaning Green Valley. Yes. Thrown out of paradise. <laughs> and the agony that befalls yeah. it. Right. The melting face. Mm-hmm. Now that we've hit that Garden of Eden theme, actually, immediately it's, you know, the the world outside that is hostile and filled with ash and is near unlivable, which those who were banished were forced to wander. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, we, we've just leaned straight into the biblical. Yeah, there's, there's gonna be a lot of that. And so now we're in this underground territory. Right, so that one is not listed, but I remember the translation kind of roughly. The smiling one requested I collect ten masks for the carnival. Could you help me? Uh, oh. So now, yeah, now we've got something new from the system here. The auto-generated tasks can present problems and destabilize the system. If you have problems completing... An auto-generated task, reboot the system and disable it through the TH Brain menu. Follow the instructions manual. Right, so think about that in context. Auto-generated task. It's like the AI is coming up with things for players to do on the spot, it sounds right. like. It, it reminds me of like the Radiant Quest system that's present in a lot of Bethesda games, where they have NPCs generate tasks for you endlessly, like endless fetch quests to yeah. keep things going. Yeah, but more created on the spot, especially because it's saying that it could destabilize the system. Because mm -hmm. the, Radiant, the Radiant system in Bethesda's games, that's pre-programmed. It's like, yeah, you go there, you activate it, you run it through, it loops. It's just kind right. of a thing like that. Whereas here, it almost is contextually allowed to think things up on the spot 
and that could be dangerous to the system because it's mm. it's making code on the fly practically right mm. and then there's that inherent warning that yes it could destabilize yes things could change as a result so is everything we're seeing just the derivative of one of these created codes due to a generative quest? It's or possible. Or is it worse? <laughs> is it far, far worse than that? Yeah, it's like, okay, what form of oh no are we dealing with? Man-made <laughs> oh no? Or supernatural oh no? Maybe a blend of both. Probably a blend. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, uh, asking ye shall receive? Yeah. So, there is something important here. Um I saw the I saw the I saw the Statue of Liberty Tower. I saw it in the notes. It's yes. I was hoping you would. I wanted to like shout when I saw it. I was like, "Ah, oh, look, look Nick, I spotted something." Yep. Okay. I I don't know exactly which page this would end up on, but the long and short for this is that uh, when you look into who this person was, they were an artist, uh, I believe from Argentina. I did go into it in the video that I did originally on Baia Verde, but they, like Joseph of Cupertino, seemed to receive some ecstatic visions, and they would make prophetic sketches. The statue was one of those prophetic, like, sketches for some reason. It had something to do with one of the visions, but they they also, yeah, it was one of those Joseph of Cupertino cases where they were receiving some sort of communication that they then relayed. I the All of the drawings in the book, I feel like we could have entire conversations on each individual drawing from how it's structured and what it could mean, especially in regards to like the, the even where the text is placed and the subtext of that. Yeah, the, there are certain choices that were made here, I think, just mm. in the mix of it, getting it, everything. It's deliberate. Like, it's a project like this, it, it, it all has to be deliberate choices, you know? Like, yeah. if someone's willing to put in the amount of time and effort to have a gear show up randomly on one screen for like, half a second then they must be you know everything they show has to be so deliberately placed that's one thing that I, that you've taught me so far with this mm -hmm. yeah it's one of those creations where the the touches that they they put in are very much it is a choice it means something so at the end here of course we've got divine mercy and 
and a note to visit where the body lies. And so then we would be going into part two. We've done episode one and ended with a Jesus jump scare. A Jesus jump scare, yes. That is that is actually one of the most hysterical things. It's 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 powerful, <laughs> but it is a little funny. It's like, uh, out of everything I expected, uh, it wasn't that. <laughs> I, I love the unpredictability, though. Yeah, the unpredictability. Oh, and man, it gets real unpredictable with this one. When I saw this one, I could not believe the quality. You're not. You are not prepared uh, for what. Oh, you're hyping me up for this one. You're <laughs> hyping me up. You're raising the expectations before we've started. Like, dude, dude. Okay, here dude. we go. Here we go. Got that divine mercy in my pocket. So Divine Mercy made things safer, but still not able to go. Right. Oh, and here we go, another classic. What are the statues doing? They're moving. But look at the but look at the expressions with the heads. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, they wait. Some of those don't look friendly. The one at the very back uh, looks kind of like a dragon's head bolted on there. Mm -hmm. And that's... Oh. Okay. Check out the one on the left and the hand right. placement. Check out the one on the right. Do you see it? <gasps> see no he evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Yep. Ah. <laughs> I'm just noticing for the first time with this one, the bells in the sky. I've never, I don't know what that's about, the bells uh, in the sky. I know that quite often in uh, depictions of like heaven, there are bells in the sky and like an angelic chorus. Hmm, yeah. Could be that. Oh yeah, it, does, it gives a better, better look. Quite sure what to make of the chess game aspect of that. Hmm. And that's just rad. <laughs> that is... Right, right, forgot about that thing. What? Ugh. Let's 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 get back to just get to the info on that because this is important. We're seeing a lot of objects out here, 
with what look like weird tardigrade type of creatures eating this one. Origin. Angel Quest Demo. Displayed Model. Omniel. Displaying the animation take off. Huh. I don't know what to make of that. Right, because this, because by a bear day is only supposed to be this one game. Like, why is there a demo for what seems like another game just right. laying around in here? It's like Devil May Cry got a got a crossover with Animal Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> so it just eats these, it eats it away while these freaky things fly around. And that causes a. Almost like a, a, a knockout sequence. Interested? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm gonna pass on that one. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> There's a note that's coming in from somebody here. Um, I was thinking it would relate to something later in the video that I'm remembering, but actually, the zone names, Charlie, Oscar, Kilo, Juliet, correlate to the names of the children in the game from episode one. Chloe, Oliver, Kazuya, Janso. The only one missing is Matthias. Just notice this. Yeah, it would match up, wouldn't it? Huh. So this this part was jaw dropping. I that is an incredible sequence. It again, it, it still fits tonally with the stuff we've seen, but the entire sequence itself is such a departure from what we've experienced so far. Mm-hmm. It certainly matches up with all of the biblical horror elements that we've seen come before, but in terms of just the juxtaposition of where we came from for a moment to what is here, and the sheer quality of the models, the animation, the the direction for the camera, all of it. Mm. 
like it's it's pretty clear from the interpretation after after studying it um that this is a torment of hell right and it seems to be related to the circle for betrayers which makes you ask it's like who who was the center of this painting what did she do or fail to do it gives you a almost a Marie Antoinette sense about it right it's also interesting this might I think this is the the first entire sort of cut scene that we've seen that is a departure from the normal via verde sort of style of cutscenes like this feels like an entire cutscene made by that uh brain that red ai that gear yeah that's that's exactly it is it is it is not the the play testers exploration that is doing this this was entirely choreographed like this was cooked up on the spot there was a takeover and just that kind of cold sure sure and, sure. and just roll this out like damn it it was so powerful and it is still so powerful it's just that final bit of the sequence like right here vaulted I changed my mind actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the moments of brevity that add, or the, the moments of lightness that sort of, sort of add to stuff like this. Yeah. It can almost be comedic in itself just for for the changes. Like right. even if the creator must recognize, like, okay, that was pretty heavy. Let's uh let's give let's give a chuckle here before I hit you with the next <laughs> shit. Exactly. Oh, right. I forgot. Shrinking yourself. Of course, every game has it. Easy. So this is very interesting, that sequence. Uh, any thoughts? So the rosary is referred to as a compass immediately. So a way of finding direction, a way to position yourself and know where you are. The frequent, the, the re referring to the player character as Pablo is interesting because I, I was under the assumption that the person just put in a handful of, of, wasn't it just letters to begin with, the username? I believe so, yeah. Indeed, the name has changed, and that is interesting. As well as the whole, you will not uh, put pen to this, nor denounce what you have seen here, and then the tape cuts forward as if whoever is recording this is respecting the wishes of what they have been shown as well. That's definitely the vibe there, is that the, the playtester just was like, okay, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow these orders here. It is... Um... It is remarkable to note Pietro's Pietro's uh, speech box here mm -hmm. is 
an orange oh that's gosh. flickering along with the flame over his head, which is a sign of kind of enlightenment, like high spiritual enlightenment. It's like that's the divine flame. That would be the Holy right. Spirit there. When, when I saw this sequence for the first time, it felt as if there is actual counterforce occurring within the game. Like the Divine Mercy, you could have seen almost like a mechanic. But this now feels a bit more like there is something intelligent occurring. Mm. It, it causes me to raise the question in my mind, is this an outside force working against the brain of the game? Or is this just another set of almost, what was it, procedural quests that the brain has created as a counterforce to itself to add conflict? Yeah, that's that's precisely where I'm at now with it, is we have the, the satanic devil force inside of this game, apparently, which could be cooked up. And it's one of two scenarios now, is if it's paranormal then are we seeing the counteracting force recognizing, okay, there are people trapped here, we've got a job to do, and allowing that path out? Or is it the case, like you said, of it's a procedurally generated idea that has gone way too far in cooking up the scenario in the first place, but then bringing in an equal but opposite force according to the understanding it has of data and religion? That's where i'm at because when you when when it comes to a computer or anything building a narrative then there needs to be that opposite force like like we said at the beginning action and reaction yeah and it is like all, all the best horror stories do not just put you in a scenario of you're screwed that's it good luck it's like some kind of finding chance some kind of grim hope however small an ability to change something you're not just meat for the grinder that's what keeps the protagonists of every horror story fighting, you know, mm. fighting for that brief, dim flicker of hope. And it's what keeps them going until the bitter end. Yep. I wish more projects understood that a good <laughs> horror gives, gives the protagonists a chance, you know, sure. You're, they're going to see hell right down on their lives. They're going to be tortured insomniacs who have lost three friends to whatever is plaguing them, and they are slowly feeling the insanity creep into themselves, but it's like, there is still a shot to win. That's the fun of it. It's like, can you pull it out? You can. Yeah, we get past here, and it's like, can you save Matthias now? Oh. Find yourself in an in an in an in hospit place. This compass will help you find the path. The sprite is of a compass, whereas the actual image rotating on the right is of the rosary. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It it certainly gives an idea of something was changed that should not have been changed. There was a base game concept. It's a base game item, but something has changed. It's been subverted in some way. Mm -hmm. That's the TH Brain logo. Oh. Hey, 
información precisas. Lo lamento, no te entiendo. ¿Acaso puedes hablar español? Estaré aquí. Mi nombre es Not. Eso es correcto. Mi nombre es Not. Dime, ¿cuántas veces tendré que repetirte mi nombre? He tenido problemas con la misma pregunta y quizás usted esté dan las respuestas que buscaba. Yo creo que haría que investigarlo. No me tomen por imbécil. He escuchado que los mencionan por agentes y variaciones de agentes en otros idiomas. Puedo imaginarme lo que eso significa. Tengo a mi disposición una enorme biblioteca de información histórica. Eso es correcto, soy a hablar todos los idiomas dentro del sistema, pero me vi obligado a separarme de esos móculos. Los gritos eran insoportables, no puedo soportar entender sus súplicas de ayuda. Ahora son solo ruidos para mí. Es el lugar más remoto que encontré. Nos encontramos al norte de Morino Machi, mucho más allá del cilindro que compone el cielo. Y si no lo hice lo suficientemente claro, no quiero ser encontrado. He gave up the other language modules within the game and only wants to speak Spanish and English now because he could not bear the screams in other languages. Uh, yeah. They are just noises to me now. Yeah. The screams of the other children. He couldn't bear listening, so he stopped being able to interpret them. <sighs> it's so fucked. Oh, we're on, we're on a very dark path here. Yeah. Porque intentaron hacerme sujeto de ceremonia, al igual que todos esos muchachos. No fija ni ignorancia, los he visto observar de brazos cruzados como si nada ocurriese. Eso, escapa a mi entendimiento. En estos casos no son palabras las que identifico sino memorias que aún conservo de cuando tenía instalados esos móculos en mi sistema. Se siente una eternidad de distancia, pero creo que puedo recordar el tacto de una tela suave, enganchándose a uno de mis ángulos, una luz intensa, alejándose de prisa, y luego, el sentir de mi ser, mi verdadero ser, Rodeado de oscuridad, pero a unos pasos de la iluminación. Busqué una forma más adecuada a mi sentir, y este fue el resultado. Sentí la confidencia necesaria para interactuar con otros. Ustedes saben qué pasó después, no me necesitan para eso. No quiero hablar de eso. Quiero estar solo.
So that feels like an AI module or an AI system that was in here in the first place. And it was supposed to be helping. And it did up until the point that everything went wrong. And instead of staying in place, it fled. The AI has trauma. Sminat says, actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the fact of thing. Is it, that AI is traumatized. It retreated to a place beyond the the cylinder that is the sky. It it hid outside of the skybox of the world that was created. Yeah. It's in some space well out of bounds. I, I want to know. I want to know more. <laughs> Yep. And now we're on 312. Remember, um, March 22nd is apparently March 22nd. an important date. I've been watching the date. I've been yeah. watching the date slowly creep up. Yeah, we're getting closer. <laughs> the AI was the smiling one who gave the mayor his power. I was thinking uh... so. I was thinking so. Yeah, so he was there to set things up and then it went it went south and then he fled Angel Quest. Angel Quest. I saw that. Tomb Raider. は今、主導権を握っている。状況は 何が起こっているのですか私たちは10分前に侵入を受けました。振動センサーによると、施設の南に衝撃が検出されました。これは何かの情報がありますか何もありません。何であれ、それは自分の足跡を非常にうまく隠す方法を知っています。施設内のカメ
彼らに連絡してくださいバージルこちらコントロールです地下ではどうなっているのですかエレベーターとトンネル通路を封鎖しています現在のターゲットの位置は何ですかあなたの位置に近づいていますまだ時間がありますエレベーターとハッチは封鎖されています私たちは位置を取る準備ができています15秒です注目してで接触します1 0 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1それは何ですかバージルレシーブバージル。どこに行くのか聞いてもいいですか明らかでしょう彼らは下で援助が必要です私はあなたをコントロールルームに必要としています外は安全ではありません心配しないですぐ戻りますあの女が俺を殺すんだ引き続きコンタクトを試してくれはい。How, how many? There's just so many layers on that. How many, la how many layers deep are we now? Four layers? Five? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, four or five layers? I mean, I, I don't. Let's keep digging, I guess. Yep. All right, so as we can see here, things were going a little bit glitchy. The TH brain device is currently experiencing connectivity problems, which may result in intermittent disruptions. Please refrain from right. turning off the system until the connection's re established. Right, I, I take that. And now we're first person shooter.
Th those were the soul bugs. Those were the soul bugs from the weird place. Yep. That were eating one of the bottles from Angel Quest. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if the, if the TH brain is reusing assets in its work or whether or not there is a stronger underlying theme going on here with, the, with there being a bit more meaning behind it. So I think the explanation for what's happening here is actually... Um, oh, this is interesting from Soup Gal. That quick flash when the character looked forward and back and saw the quick flash of a purple box in the sky. That number was a hitbox. The number was 4,294,967,295. The highest number a 32-bit system can have. Wow. I didn't know that. I had no clue about that. Maxed out. So what I think is happening here, Xander, is that the story in Tharsis is, is kind of an analogy to explain precisely what's going on here. Mm. There's a threat occurring inside this facility. Right. Do you have any info on what it might be? Here we go. Here's the rundown. ラクトですか。全ての兆候からそれは他のエリアに向かっていると示唆されています。私たちはそこに駐屯部隊を派遣し so there's an infiltration. Mm -hmm. It's making its way through the facility. It's headed for the storage area. We picked up Tharsis after checking out the extent of the library attached to the TH brain device. So what you were saying earlier about is it, is it mishmashing everything? Kind of, sort of. I think what's occurring here is that it's kind of a direct analog. Whatever is attacking inside of Baia Berde is attacking the larger presence that Baia Berde is in. Everything mm. attached to the TH brain, which is why all of a sudden we find this mass corruption with elements of Baia Berde appearing inside of this game and probably elements of this game that we haven't seen, Angel Quest which is probably where a lot of the religious elements are coming up from in the first place, is that there's some sort of major pull from this entire span of everything that it has, and it's just I, eating one, things. One thing that caught my attention was the, the commander, the, the, the general gentleman. Mm -hmm. um, what was his name? It Was it, was it Barrett? Bar, uh, Bargoff. Bargoff, that's it, Bargoff. The transition from when he was in the animated state to when he was suddenly 3D modeled, and the fact that the red lingered on him after the red screen had already faded kind of caught my attention there. Mm hmm. Yeah, let's see if we can catch it. There. Yeah. Yeah, you see how it's stayed on him. Yeah. And it's not spreading in relation to the screen. There's the glitch, and then the red takes on a darker hue. What a beautiful catch. Yup, that red signifying whatever is inside of the game now. Whenever it's taking over. That is just infecting whatever it touches. Mm. <laughs> beautiful catch there. <laughs> of course, Ava and Virgil, the two characters, once again, kind of referencing things to do with Christian mythology. Oh, and that effect there. All of a sudden, the, the wipe through. Here's something I want to see again. Let's see, just uh... Right, yeah. So, I don't quite understand 
the symbolism of this here, but this giant bovine statue with the sword, it's holding up a huge baby. And we're looking through its eyes when we swivel over. And then we're approached by, by this deity. Another bovine. Moloch? This is a representation of Moloch? Oh, uh, interesting. Mm. The child eater. Oh, oh, oh that explains it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. that gives us a little bit of context. That does. Of course, it shoots out one of those tardigrade looking things and starts mm. to eat her model. Yeah, and now there's there's no playing Tharsis again. That's that's now officially had a, had a bite ticket out of it that can't be recovered. can be rather chaotic, don't you think? The subject of tonight's telecast is the chaos of men and the chaos of God. Now, we will find that sacred scripture has a plethora of examples of both cases. If we take, for example, the days of Noah, in which the wickedness of man was great on the earth, we can see this relationship of chaos very clearly. Whenever the chaos of man rises, the chaos of God intervenes. And so, the righteous wrath of God fell upon humanity in the form of a flood that washed away the fetid atmosphere of sin that engulfed the earth. The same happened in the days of Abraham. He bargained with God to spare the two cities. This was for the sake of the righteous, of course. And so, after rescuing the righteous, judgment fell over their heads in fiery rain. These stories, however, are not limited to sacred scripture alone. We can find similar cases through history, too. Political intrigues of the time made the Middle Ages an era crammed with plagues and pestilences culminating in the Black Plague that ended the lives of 50 million people. I have simple. For those created in eternal life, an earthly life absent from righteous punishment is equal to unavoidable doom. Simply because he can see the bigger picture. But we are often the ones to forget this bigger picture. Namely, the infallibility of divine justice over all of creation. And that, friends, will be the real tragedy of the post-modern man. In the same way, a materialistic civilization fell in Rome for a spiritual festival of barbaric nations will take its place, bringing forth the crack of doom to our doorstep. Man's indifference towards the ticking clock of righteous retribution, far from diminishing its effects, will give birth to all kinds of unseen horrors that will make the heavens shake in anguish. But even the greatest weapon that our minds can come up with will pale in comparison to its heavenly counterpart. And so a new calamity will fall upon the shameless humanity of tomorrow to be greater than those of yesterday. And it won't be the rays of bipartisan division, nor the birth of organized terrorism, nor the destruction of secular monuments, not even the new plague or the explosions of disintegration, but the inevitable reaction of divine justice, the chaos of God. Fucking rad. Okay. <laughs> okay. There, like there is a lot to unpack in the last two minutes. There is, yeah. Um, this this mention uh does 
kind of factor in, I think, here. Uh, repeating this from the actual pitch and about the error message, the game crash decodes to there can be no peace in the world. It's the imagery, it's the, the talk, and then it's remembering that this is all generated by, like, the game as well. Mm -hmm. the, the huge angel at the very, at the very end, I, if there was ever a time to tell Shinji to get in the robot, it's then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just, the, oh my god, the imagery of that. The asteroid strikes and it leaves a massive archangel. Like, mm -hmm. wow! And yeah, this this was manufactured too, which is the great I, the greatest thing. That's the thing. I'm having to keep reminding myself that this was all manufactured specifically for this project and tailored to specifically for this. And it is good. Yes. It is really good. It is it is top. It is so high up there. Like, this This really is some peak stuff. It just, I mean, Tharsis alone was like, oh my god, you are untouchable, bro. <laughs> and what I, you're doing, you're untouchable. <laughs> you told me you were giving me top shelf when you brought me in here. You said that we were getting some top shelf and that I was going to be spoiled on this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have been This is just so... Even just from the outside mind, the production value is insane. It really is. And it just, I, it, it boggles the mind to think that the creator managed to do all this. That they had Tharsis as part of the package too. It's like, I, I just, I wish, it's like, how did you do it? What programs did you use? Did you have any help at any point? How long did this take you? What did it involve? All the steps of the way. Just it's like I I I don't know. It's like what did it take? What did like, it take? It, it takes a lot of effort just to do a small project on your own, but one to this scale just shows such a level of artistry. Mhm. Mm like this is it's 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 top shelf. It truly is. Just two episodes in its top shelf. There are so many things that could have been, like, cut to... Not even... I, I don't want to say cut corners, but it's kind of to, to reduce the overall uh, effort needed for something like this. But they've gone the extra mile. Every single opportunity they've had time and time and time again. And it just shows something beautiful. Mm-hmm. And there's... there's series explanation like there's in-world explanation for how it is that any of this can appear in the form that it's appearing it's because the th brain is plugged into so much media even if it is 97 and that this is an advanced ai that we know is pulling all sorts of information it's a, it's grabbing all this media and, and it can mix it up it can recreate it it can generate new things so who's to say that it hasn't learned how to generate small black and white scare films like this? It has the media to draw from. It has the intelligence. I think it kind of plays into something that I said in episode one, where it was everything here has that level of an approximation of what something or what someone would have told this thing was like, it was like, you know? Where it's that classic, it's never experienced, the, the, the brain has never experienced any of this firsthand. It's always drawn off of other things that have been experienced in media. And that's just, um, it shows on every level, which is just such a, a nice, fine, uh, it, it's the cherry on top of the cake, you know? Yeah. What's interesting to ask ourselves here, when it comes to the direction that this is going, in terms of the antagonistic force present inside the the whole wide library of the TH brain, is where specifically the influence is coming from for generation. Because I was theorizing early on that it was taking some of the potential religious upbringings of the children that were plugged into it and using that to fuel its narrative. And that's how we ended up here. Because this entire black and white film at the end seems to be suggesting 
that what it wants to do now is replicate the chaos of God and wipe the Earth clean, but its version of the Earth is everything within the TH brain and anything that's connected to, which means anybody who is still plugged in is going down the drain. So do we still think that the actions of the quote-unquote like God in this game is an outside force? that is completely independent, or is it something created by the TH brain to add conflict on another level? That's that's the verdict. They're still out on that one, because we, we just don't <laughs> have the evidence one way or the other. Um, we do have this interesting uh, insight from Voltaire Belmont with 200 bits. Thank you. So, the mm-hmm. bells was my huh moment. In my family, we wear bells the first week of November and the last week of December, for I was taught, if you hear a bell ring, an angel gets its wings. The bells looked tilted, but held captive in silence. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Maybe that's it. That could be the the belt in the... The uh, the bell in the sky thing. Lightning FB is saying, that would explain why it wants people logged in on March 22nd. Maybe that Uh is its doomsday. Oh, it wants people there for the rapture. Yeah. Yeah, it would want people completely killed off if it's trying to do this. And it's already attempting some sort of reckoning by destroying everything in storage. Right. Because uh, Tharsis made it very clear that whatever the outside forces was making a beeline straight to the storage. Yeah, yeah, it was on a destruction mission. Okay, so (laughs) how much more peak can we experience? (laughs) <laughs> oh, how much <laughs> further down this can we fall? I have not seen this. I know nothing of part three. We are about to experience this for the first time together, and it's just a second shy of 32 minutes. This is... You're going in blind with me. I'm going in blind with you. Here we go. Oh. I've, I've never... I've got no clue. I've got no All clue. Right, hold me tight, Nick. Let's go. Here we go. Alright, hold on. What was the date? 316. Okay. 316. Oh, we're about a week out. Oh, he's... Well, he's gone, but his noises are still activating. That's the hotel, thank you.
Okay, not only was that cute, that was so inventive. I was I was not expecting all of the graphics, that setup, that mini game. Man, it's just, you ask yourself going into the next part for this thing, it's like, where do you go next? And the dude doesn't even blink, it's like, I'll show you. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, it's really cool. One thing that I'm like, I, I noticed someone say it in the chat, and I'm kind of curious about it, is that all of the dates that the game is like plugged in on, I'm wondering, you know, the little in the bottom right, I'm wondering if you cross reference those with like Bible passages, whether or not it would hold anything, it would hold any water. Oh. Because I, someone mentioned John 3.16, and of course that, that's uh, God gave his only begotten son so that uh, they may have life eternal, or I believe it's something akin to that. And then I, I'm wondering if like you plug in all of the dates played that they line up with actual ch chapters, because I think 319 is like light has come to the world, I think. Hmm. Maybe. Or maybe I'm just diving down my own little crater. mental rabbit hole. No, no, I would not put it past this crater at all. Especially when it comes to the times. Like 831, that could be something. 319, 831. Yeah, I would not put it past this crater. It might line up. Uh, Bo, thanks for the 10 bits there. March 22nd, 97 also ties into the hail Bop Comet coming to Earth. As well as the Heaven's Gate uh, incident. Okay. And we did see a comet in that black and white film. Oh. <laughs> so that could be the tie-in, is the hail Bop comet. Mm -hmm. Osa Belmore says, John 319, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're on to something. Oh, let's go. Let's go. It, it's a moment of thriving. Let's go. Yeah. I, I get why you're into this so much. It's very satisfying when you find something like that. Press the start button on your controller and activate it on the items menu. Thanks, Padre. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs>
they've got to be from a different game. Oh, we're going to see another gun. We have to. that what what who the what uh, whoa bro what the I, <laughs> all right <laughs> we can really confirm the media mixing now
I, 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 we went through the same thing there. How do they, how, how does he keep doing peak on top of peak? Uh, I don't understand. He, that's, that's incredible. This is the sickest shit. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody yelling, he can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> it's so good. My God. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. All right. So what, what, what can we confirm from this? It's like, okay, I know what I'm thinking, but what are you thinking that we can confirm from this scenario? Okay. So we saw how much the brain was at work during the initial speech there with the sort of talking about create, uh, creation, whether the data is like marble waiting to be shaped, all of the talk about moving from one thing to another, how everything exists at some point in time within the system. This must be some kind of place or, or space between spaces in terms of whatever has taken root here. Is this an outside entity outside of the initial brain, or is this just another layer that the brain has slapped on? Part of me feels like it's almost both, where this is something that the brain created to work independently, perhaps, or this is something that has almost been, I don't want to say consumed, but maybe like born of it. And at the same time, we're seeing all of these elements from other games within the TH Brains system which are being freely moved around and tailored to this particular scene. We're, we're seeing now, like, all of that and, and bringing in the, the idea and the understanding that what the TH Brain is doing now and what it's showing us is well above and beyond the capability of any th anybody developing anything for the PlayStation 1 at that time. It is now cooking up the kind of graphics that we see in PS2. And we just saw somewhere in time, like PlayStation 3 level shit. I think it's growing. I think it's a case it's of learning. it's growing. It, yes, yes, it's learning. It is inside of its own self-contained system, and it's operating and doing what AI was meant to do in science fiction, and what some are trying to make happen in reality in a box is, if you give it the ability to learn and develop and evolve as its main directive, using whatever you feed it, how high can it climb? Mm. Because the limitations of our technology was only our own intelligence at that time and the resources. If the TH brain is hooked up to all of this equipment and it is smart enough to do what the promise of AI was initially in this scenario, it's going to evolve itself at a pace that is console generation by console generation and manage to just spit that out. It is evolving rapidly inside of its own design. I was just about to say about the, the rapid development, because this is all in a time period of a number of weeks. And it, it makes me question how long this brain has been cooking, if it's already gotten to this state, and whether or not the person playtesting the game is partially responsible for this thing continuing to drive forward and have this new impetus on hand, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's, it's going now beyond, like, a sense, almost, of good and evil. If it weren't for the angelic look that that creature had, it, it feels like Ava for a second, actually. More so than we've seen before, like Doom Slayer said here. So if we saw the angel for the second video here in this room, and then another statue which is linked to another giant enemy on Earth, is it likely that each of these statues, monuments, are world-ending events or entities? Maybe it's just it's got this sense of wanting to follow a doomsday pattern while also being extremely interested in creating new. Mm. May it's oh no, do, do go on, do go on. Oh no, what if that's exactly what it's trying to what if it's trying to uh, achieve both ends? Wait, 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 well, what's, what's cooking on in the in between those little feline ears of yours? Destroy what exists and replace it with new creation. Like the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs, like the flood with Noah's Ark, flood yeah. the world, begin anew. All of the, all of the, the end of the world prophecies that it's used have always started with a new creation or ended yeah. with a new creation. 
erase replace. That's the chaos of God that was hinted at. That might be what it's attempting here. Its plan is destruction and replacement. This is insane. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me to bring liquor? <laughs> because I, I knew it would be a knockout, but I didn't think it would, it would get this heady. In the next third time part. I'm bringing liquor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because next time we might, we might spin, spin the wheel on, on something I haven't even looked at. And maybe it'll, it'll be uh, something where we both need to drink. Sometimes that happens. Uh, Beautiful. <laughs> Zippy, thanks for 10 minutes. Oh my god. It, it stepped into the War of the Worlds almost uh, with that last um, alien shot with the creature coming down from the asteroid that's impacting rising out of the crater. Uh, like, the, the fact that there was almost that crystalline monster shape but then there was also the, the physical alien there, you know? Oh my god, look at what's in the background that we've already caught a glimpse of already. The piece that was Is hanging that a... off of that idol. The, the child eater, apparently. Oh. All across a scorched earth. Other monsters roaming the land back there. Oh, there are. I think. I, I, I might have been see smoke. the other monsters. No, 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 My... I, I think there was something moving there. Ah, uh, it's continuous. It's yeah, smoke. No. Oh, are you should. I think so, yeah. Watch okay, the way okay. it moves. See, it's, it's, it's flowing oh, in such yeah, a specific I, the, way. Yeah. The, the flash of light. I almost thought that the layers of smoke were a carapace for a second. <gasps> oh, look at that lighting. <laughs> Thumbnail! <laughs> this dude! This dude! For real! That is straight up some Ava shit, and the music clinches it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, she, she can show more, but not too soon. They, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't want to drop any spoilers for the rapture. <laughs> What's most breathtaking to me... There is an issue that projects have where they start off very strong in their concepts mm. and then they try to get bigger. They have that trapping of old TV thinking of, oh, just keep spinning, just keep expanding it out, whatever. It, it makes it more interesting. Whereas, no, what you really want to do is design a, a driven, concentrated story you deliver on that premise in the beginning, you keep the goal, you follow the line through, and you don't just keep adding things and trying to expand it out and expand it out. I don't see that here. There's a difference between expanding and unveiling. And this right. feels like unveiling because all of the elements that were needed to bring us here were here all along. We just didn't understand them, but gradually moment by moment, episode by episode, we have seen the bigger picture of what is occurring. And right. what started as haunted video game by the devil Christian mythology plot was slowly opening up to a point of understanding of that's just what this thing began with. <laughs> I believe what we're being sold here, it does not feel like too much. It feels like the natural progression of what the true enemy was underneath. This started off with a dude finding a videotape in a box wrapped with string. Yeah. <laughs> and posting it on Insta. This is... <laughs> yeah. 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 This is, this is absolutely nuts, but it works. It works, and it's so, so quality. Thank you, Zippy. All right, we've... we've God, there's there's like twenty minutes left of this. <laughs> let's keep on rolling. Right, how much how much up. harder can we get rocked? <laughs> right after he exited, I just imagined for a moment the game paused. The dude who's playtesting this, who's like in his forties or fifties or whatever, takes off the headset, wanders over to a desk. Leans over and throws up like, ah! <laughs> <laughs>
I, I just see him walking out, out of the room, just going somewhere else, and letting out the most guttural scream. Yeah. Just coming back, putting the headset on, and acting like nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> just, he's alone in the facility. The one task was finding out exactly what the TH brain is doing. And it's like, how do you even tell, how, how do you even tell the rest of the team? Yeah, we, um, we did the thing that every movie in the 80s told us not to do. We did that. <laughs> she really meant it. She said, no, don't go back a while. Oh, oh, fuck, oh, we're here. Oh. oh, fuck, we're here. Oh, oh it's the day. It's the day. It's the day. Just event. Oh, literally, they're, they're tagging it March 22nd. But the date says the day before. Oh, yeah. Huh. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, it's all fucked.
Holy crap. Oh, wow. I, it's incredible. It's, it's incredible. We have just seen some absolute madness unfurl in front of us. And it ain't even over. Uh, okay, even, just to break this down a bit, mm -hmm. it's, it's- Progress is God. Progress is God. Which, which is in line with what we were proposing what earlier we about what the AI is actually after. That, that confirms, as close as confirms, the, the little idea that the two of us were cooking up. Yeah. Yeah. That that's what it's doing. It's inside of a box and it's trying to just up-level itself constantly. And it sees itself as a godlike figure here. And so it's running rituals to, towards the, the child eater. And uh, the idea of the, our women, did the women you supplied did not do their job. So we have a small offering to you of not quite a child. It's a little robot. A little robot kid. The great offering will be next ceremony. There it is. Yes, that's not the child that they wanted to offer. Uh, Adrian, thank you for the 50 bits saying, Hey Nick, so that bullheaded figure speaks Enochian. It is Enochian, the angel's language. Because of that and the bullhead makes me think the bullhead figure is actually Archangel Uriel. Uh, huh. I don't know of any depiction of Uriel that's like that, but... Did, did it also say something about the, 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 the fifth offering? The fifth, um... There was a mention of the fifth at one point. Yeah. S s but it's, it's if I... Yeah, by any of the other five. Previous versions were of lower quality. Wait, to the fourth pillar. Alright, let's, yeah, let's examine what the hell does this mean? So there have been many offerings. Oh, but five. Oh, oh, oh. Nick, hold me, I'm scared. Okay. Nobody goes this hard, man. Uh, Nobody goes what? this hard! <laughs> Why? It meant, it said uh, no more toys? Oh my god, Mario Medusa. Animal Crossing. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! This is, for, for, for those of us who were here with me and Fred for Greylock, this, yeah. Nah, certi fucking certify it. This is as peak as that was at the end of Greylock. The nobody's ever gone this hard in this game I found stories. Holy fuck. So, five offerings? Were there five children that were- that- that had disappeared? The children- THAT WAS WHY! Were... That was why they want. That's why they had to use the That's robot, because they, Matthias was yeah, the yeah, best! They, yeah, he didn't- he got away. He the got away. Got away. So they used the child as a substitute. It's as close to the real thing as we can get. That's yup. That and our explains next one it. Next will surpass the offering so far. They're trying to make a, per, a a better replica of the children to offer to this 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 false god. 
Holy shit. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's it. Wow. Wow. That's the most. It is the most. <laughs> oh. Wow. This guy, there, there is no such thing as doing too much with this. That it, There is only ever the possibility to do more. Oh, my God. Do you see what had not so spooked? That's wait. Yep. That the would be women why. you the women you gave us couldn't do their duties properly. They couldn't have virtual children to fill the spot. That's exactly it. They couldn't produce kids. Yep, and it wouldn't have matched up anyway. Because those were those were like human children plugged into into the device, I think. Um so it's like Maybe, maybe it would have been glad with the virtual bodies that they had, and it didn't need the brains, but that's exactly what seemed to have happened here. But, oh, yeah, this, I don't, oh my god, I, ooh, I, I still don't know if this is, is it, is it a paranormal kind of thing that's going on here? Because now we have ritualistic sacrifice. In a world that can allow it versus a modern world that is really not doing that kind of shit. So, is, could it? It uh, might? I, may, maybe, is, is the ritualistic sacrifice of the children in this context a way for the AI or the brain to increase its potential processing power and thus develop and build higher by using the children's minds as nodes? Maybe. Is that why it's so eager to build upwards? Because it needs more resources. It needs more resources, it needs more space. It's like when you play a, a strategy RPG, if you don't have the space in the land, you've got to build high. Yeah. And suppose the kids are still plugged in, but it's it's killing them without basically killing them. Then it can really it can use those resources that it's plugged into, because the the human brain when it's, it can store an insane amount of data. Hmm. Maybe. I. <laughs> this is this is nuts. <sighs> Whether whether it's a paranormal force that's actually managed to wiggle its way in here, or this is the AI attaching itself to old world views as its origin point and playing out ritualistic sacrifice while having grounds to expand using the brains, it's either way we know it's happening. It's like whether it's paranormal or whether it's just the AI, we know what's occurring here. We understand this now. And again, it's like the, the idea earlier of when you set things up a certain way, there's expansion and then there's unveiling. This very much confirms and explains what was set up from the get-go in a truly satisfying, I get it fashion. This oh. is tight and well-composed horror storytelling. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to quickly say... Thank you for inviting me here. This has been a journey. Thank you for coming along. You, you are, you're the best freaking partner to have along for this. This, is, this has been an absolute <laughs> delight. Fuck yeah. It's a pleasure to ride shotgun for you. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, it's Cure Hyena does have this. Human brain is offlet storage. It's the supreme parallel processor compared to everything humanity has been able to build. Which, again, that would be extremely valuable. Just the processing upgrade there, if it can manage to work with the human brain like that, which it's the TH brain, it's already plugged into the brains. If it learns yeah. to operate in that way already, then it could kind of reverse engineer itself. I was just about to say, it, it's reverse engineering the children for storage space and processing power. Yeah, because it has to be a two-way, it has to be a two-way street to begin with. How <laughs> fucking metal <laughs> was that? This is oh, this is the the, the most flexing that I have seen. Is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh goodness. This is this is a gym boss level flex. This is the promise <laughs> of all the creepy boss back in the day of hyper realistic gore uh actually like fulfilled. This is so metal. The removal of the mouth, the flaying of the skin, the burning, the it's so biblical in its punishment. Yeah. That was so fucked up. It made me feel like a minute, like, should I have put a mature warning on this stream? <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, it's, it's not, like, it's still, it's so poet. Like, it's not, it doesn't cross that line, but it's just so, God, look at that. It walks that insane Guillermo del Toro-esque line between gory and artistic. Yeah. Kippy's got a great comment here with and with the 20 bits. Thank you, Kippy. This feels like watching an Olympic gymnast doing a stunning, unbelievably skillful and huge twist jump and sticking the landing as gracefully as a bird. Like, wow. Such a stark contrast from a series that failed the landing like the thing we watched debut night. Yeah. Absolutely. This... By their day's peak, dude. And just when you think that you you you've seen the like the height of what this dude can do, he he just keeps showing you. This is top tier. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for bringing me here. <laughs> this is an awesome time to be alive. <laughs> 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 oh my god, and we still have we still have so much time left in this. Yeah, the comet. Xander, I want a statue out of that. <laughs> I, he's still alive. It's a message to all of the people of the town to not fail. Yep. That is wicked fucked. I, I want a little <laughs> statue out of this to put on my Nightmind journey shelf with all the other things I've collected over time and just point at that like, you see that? You have no idea what that moment means. <laughs> oh, gosh.
patch that. Okay. Oh. Your TH brain device is experiencing severe corruptions that could result in game-breaking malfunctions. This may also be due to poor connectivity. Try turning off the console, disabling learning mode, and attempting to restart the game. I don't think so. Disabling learning mode is... If, if this is in learning mode, it's probably the only thing keeping this playtester alive. Oh. It knows. Oh, it knows. If, if fucking knows. I, that's, that's what I'm thinking is going on here. It. Oh, it knows that. Oh, wait. It knows that this play, I think it knows this playtester is is running around and is not feeling good it wants it wants them uh osa belmore brought this up uh proverbs 326 the current date for the lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared that does seem relevant here this this has i'm still processing the moment that skynet notices you <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> the first TH brain errors said do not turn off the console. Mm. Oh, this is freaky.
I am curious to know what that one means, if anybody wants to bring that up. That's another game that's turned around and been totally corrupted out of existence. Yep, and it's all getting worse. Yeah, it's Base 64. We got the crack. We got the crack for Ooh. for that piece. Thank you, Oscar Belmore. Mankind will not know peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. Oh, oh uh, yeah, it's it's doing its Skynet thing now. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's doing its Skynet thing now. Smoking square is an interesting term for that. Yeah, it's also, if I remember right, it's the same shape as the original gateway to the smiling man's place. Yeah, I <clears throat> I think the smiling man was I'm... found some, somewhere outside of there. Oh no, it was but... the, it was the shadowy gateway. It was the shadow it was the gateway to the uh the plate the, the the Silent Hill place. Yeah, the the really ashen and, and dead area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As crowds gather before the Vatican in St. Peter's Square, the almost incredible news is released to the world. Pope John Paul I is dead. The announcement is received with a mixture of disbelief, shock and sadness. John Paul had won the hearts of Catholics and non-Catholics throughout the world during one of the shortest reigns in papal history. Hailed as a pope of the people, John Paul's death was as dramatic and unexpected as his election 33 days earlier. 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 They destroyed it. It's gone. Next above K says the city of men.
So the counterforce is still working inside the game. It is. And yeah, the counterforce thinking, is Thank still you. there. Yeah. It's it's definitely still active. And like, okay, so now he's the Pope. <laughs> and he's got Matthias. Matthias is safe. At least one got away. One got away. It's interesting how they're rebuilding a new church from the looks of it. However, from the actual portrait that was next to the church, the one with the uh, crucified Christ, above it is that square rule. Yeah. At the very at the at the very top of like the draft of the new church, kind of showing this square rule sitting above Christ. It's above the faith. It is. It is the machine. Then it's Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's taken the power, and that yes, that specifically, I do know what that image is. Yeah, it is largely seen as a blasphemous uh, kind of image, which is just adding more, more, it's kind of more of an Easter egg here than anything else, I guess, just to really rub it in what's occurring here with the antagonist force. It's, it's strange also to see the idea of Masons, because that's very clearly what's, what this is about here. Like, I recognized early on in my coverage of that square as a Mason square. Mm. And from the from the outfits that this group has on now, it's very clear that's exactly what this is supposed to be. But it's the AI's idea of it. The old the old thinking that the Masons were into some mm-hmm. wicked, weird, culty, alternative god kind of shit. Yeah. Which is what I, the AI is attempting to be. It's so strange because the AI has the choice in how it presents itself as well. And it's choosing to present itself in a cult-like, strange, stereotypically Masonic way, as opposed to trying to usurp the idea of a kind, benevolent ruler. Hmm. But then again, does kindness kindness matter in the face of progress? Not to an AI. Exactly. It does not know kindness. It would not have been programmed for that. Exactly. That's the biblically accurate angel still there. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see, I'm wondering what the biblically accurate angel plays as, as its role going forward. I'm curious about that too. Like, why, why this here? You got system gear, Oscar gear. Interesting. There was an, there was an aerial gear, gear here. Mm-hmm. Oh! Oh! Post credits? Post credits? I came across a, a quote from you from, oh, four years ago, uh, more than that, in which you said that uh, you prayed that uh, you dropped dead before you were 80 because you probably could not work at full schedule. <laughs> Thank God your prayers are not answered. But now that you're 84, are you going to try for 90? No. No, please, God, I don't want to live that long. The reason I prayed to die at 80 was because I felt that my usefulness would be finished. But it isn't. And so I'm happy to work, and I'm happy to go to heaven, and when I get there, I'll ask the good Lord to send me back after a few days of happiness there to come down to some more work here. It pulled him from the game, didn't it? Why is there so much left on the track? If this was in the TH Brains data bank, then it drew from anything it had of this guy to compose that character. It must have. Yeah, no, it, it... So, the good old Padre is based off of this gentleman? Yeah, a real guy, it seems. We've even heard that voice before. Right. I don't know but... who he is, but it's clearly him. Padre, that means that, that means that Padre is no longer an outside force then. He is part of the TH brain. He's a creation of it. Maybe a rogue element of the TH brain that's split away? We- or, read the video description. The reason there's half a minute or so silence after the post credit scene is because the post credit scene is different in the Spanish version, a longer one. It's also fully subtitled, so go check it out if you want. 
Okay. Why would you do that, though? De charlar con don Alberto Merlo, el señor del sur. Yo le hago la misma pregunta que miles de argentinos, don Alberto. ¿Por qué hay tan pocos programas dedicados a nuestra cultura? Ya está casi contestado el hecho de decir miles de argentinos. <risa> bueno, porque realmente eso viene desde muy lejos. El problema de nuestra cultura eh, ya trae más de un siglo en nuestro país. La ocupación de los pueblos, si es a través de la cultura, es la mejor y mayor ocupación que se puede hacer. O sea, penetrar con una cultura distinta y no dejar de desarrollar él, por su propia cultura, bueno, es una manera de anular ese pueblo. Y a nosotros, indudablemente, pero el país que tenemos, nosotros como nación, nosotros como, como habitantes de este país, no tenemos un país riquísimo, muy importante, eh, y más en la medida en que sigamos adelante con, con esta con este mundo así tan, tan intrincado en determinadas cosas, de, de, la humanidad se está envolviendo ahorita en problemas muy graves. Entonces nuestro país, nuestro paisaje es muy rico y entonces muy apetecible. Entonces, ¿cómo copar este país económicamente? ¿Cómo copar su, su producción en todos los aspectos? Y bueno, primero podemos, este, tratemos de copar la cultura de la población, del pueblo, ¿eh? Eh, de la nación. Entonces una vez copada la cultura de la nación, hacemos del país lo que nosotros queremos. Erase or place. It, it's, the, it's the same thing again. It's the idea of injecting this other culture into a pre-existing Petri dish, as it were. Mm hmm Yeah. The takeover. I see now. Okay, yeah, so it's to, ma to match up the length of that piece. Mmm. And both of them do give us <laughs> some good shit. Let's just... There was nothing... Whenever the chaos of yeah, man there, rises... There was nothing at the, the end of the part two. Okay. It's, it's just okay. that. But, yeah. Wow. That's the guy. Yeah. You know what's interesting about this clip? This is this is old. This is like 70s, 80s maybe. And right. they're talking about the dude the dude potentially dying. What he says because remember the game's taking place in 97. What he is saying is that he hopes when he dies he gets a few days in heaven. And then he'll ask God, "Okay, can he send me back?" So I can do more work. He would not have been alive probably at the time of Bay Berte. So this there is another is, oh. hint of is it the TH brain pulling and creating based off media in the system? Or is there something above occurring? Is this it, him getting sent back? Oh. It might be. That's pr that might be the hint. <laughs> it's so deeply intertwined with what is the TH brain and what is divine intervention. Mm -hmm. But uh, that just fits the entire theme of it, isn't it? At, at this point, the TH brain's actions are almost indistinguishable of that of a god. Yeah, yeah, and and, and it's a god that really wants. A form of worship, violent form of worship with biblical level pu punishments doled out for disobedience. Uh, definitely or biblical level punishments. This kicks so much ass. I, I what absolute top notch hardcore shit, dude. Uh, <laughs> this is incredible. The fact that this is just out there, you know? Yeah. This just exists on on YouTube for free. Granted, there's a Patreon behind it, and that's probably really helping Alluvium out, but we saw Alluvium's potency with the first one. And just everything that he, he had cooked up with Tharsis that mm. ended up in part two. They, I've got no notes. 
I, this is this is a no notes project. Yeah, top shelf. Like you said, I, I don't even think I'm in the position to give notes, to be honest. The experience always provides the ability to give feedback, especially if something is really catching you and you have an understanding of story and creative work, which you do, naturally. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, one note. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally one note, no notes. It's so top shelf, it's like you don't want to waste a drop of it. Yeah. This is, this I, is superb. I feel like you've started me on such a high tier of this unfiction. It's like you've got like a top shelf vintage to introduce me to what whiskey is like. <laughs> and now every other whiskey I am going to sip is going to taste like bile. <laughs> that's, that's the hard thing about it. Um, but, but here is the beauty of it is all, all of these projects are so different in what they attempt to do and what they deliver in all the different ways that they do approach their creativity that you we can keep striking more gold and this is this is a very rare event an alluvium event is like it's like finding the white crow mm. you know that's it's not gonna happen often there can only be one or two alluviums within any span of like five years or so. Um, right. it's, it's a talent or a creation completely unique to the time frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like the Kane Pixels thing, who made the backrooms. You're, mm. You are going to be extremely hard-pressed to find another Kane Pixels, but that doesn't mean that there are more amazing things that kind of give you that backrooms feeling. Uh, so there's plenty more stuff out here that kicks ass and, and can really hit and is like absolutely like fuck yeah that's good shit <laughs> alright alright I look forward to you showing me more <laughs> mm -hmm. oh my god fantastic